Hi, hi, hello, hello. We are continuing our journey through uh, the music of the last decade by reading a whole bunch of lists. Uh, we're going to tackle another big one now, Pitchfork's Top 200 Songs. Most of the lists we've been looking at are 100 entries or less. But Pitchfork <clears throat> goes all in with the 200. And good on them to do so. I'm, I'm hoping to do a, a best songs list of my, my own. It's, it's really difficult to put together. When I've done them for years in the past, I've had a rule where like none of the albums I'm putting on the best albums list will have songs on the best songs list just to kind of encourage diversity and to kind of make me think about like, okay, well, what, which of these projects that I enjoy as albums that I go to and listen to all the way through most of the time and which ones that I like go after certain singles, certain songs that really uh, I gravitated towards. But I don't know, it's like an imperfect methodology. Like, I think in the end, it's like, you got to remember that these lists are supposed to just be like a, a cool way to convey your musical tastes and to make recommendations and such. It, it doesn't actually have to be accurate to your taste so much as it is a good expression of your taste. And I think uh, Pitchfork quite understands this, um, and usually their song lists, it's like, uh, as I said, it, it's kind of focusing more on how did they stand out as songs versus how are they part of like a larger album experience. So that their best songs list very rarely are just, well, here's our favorite cuts from all the albums that we put. Um, like, there's always going to be a bit of that, you know, there's songs that form the centerpieces of albums you really enjoy and deserve to be recognized as quality songs on their own. But Pitchfork is, is much more tapped into kind of the, the culture around songs, which is very different than the culture around albums. So what I'm looking for here is a lot more like kind of like poppy things, things that were big hit singles, but didn't necessarily lead to a cohesive album. I'm looking for like Amigo songs, you know, that had such a huge impact, even if none of their full length projects uh, really reflected that level of consistent quality. Same with like other rappers. I'd like to see a few Young Thug entries on here, um, like some Drake songs, they, they mentioned Drake here, um, like all of these people of course appeared on the album list as well, but Drake I feel is, is much more expressed by songs and singles than he is by full length projects. So yeah, I don't know, um, I'd like to see some more Kanye stuff, Ultralight Beam, maybe Saint Pablo. Um, What's my call for number one? It could be Kendrick Lamar's All Right. That was number one of the year. I don't know. Um, yeah, this list is a little hard to read because it's not like they give scores to tracks. They do do track reviews. Um, I thought I, I, they do. I don't know where to get at it. And sometimes they'll give best new music to a track. Best new track. Um, but then other times they'll just review tracks <clears throat> and not talk about, uh, and not best new track. They used to give scores explicitly. Actually, here's a score I can remember. Um, uh, what would I want? Sky. They gave this a 10, this song. I don't know if that rating will still be here because they've kind of, uh, They've stopped rating songs and, and it doesn't even like appear in like the song review template anymore. Maybe it just won't review a, a load at all. It's forbidden knowledge. Yeah, so at one point they gave this like a 10 uh, when it first came out, which I thought was kind of cool. I, I think the song is like a 10 <laughs> if, if you're the type to, to rate individual songs, which to me is like, I don't know, kind of excessive almost. Um, I was going to say, I wonder if this will be on the list, but it came out in 2009. Okay, anyways, let's just plunge into it. It's As I said, it's going to be a little harder to read because I don't have this like score base, and I don't typically remember their their songs. Li oh my, levels! Okay, so it's going to be stuff like this. I don't, I don't know if um, Pitchfork genuinely really likes this song, or if they just kind of have to acknowledge how perfect it is in and of itself, you know? I mean, come on. Yeah, that's enough, right? Like, that's... <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> oh, sweet! Okay, that's pretty cool. Stormzy, uh, Gang Signs and Prayer, I think, is a fantastic album. 
I wouldn't have been too shocked if it appeared on the top 200 albums list. I, I think it's definitely good enough to make it there. Um, I don't know. But at any rate, this I think is maybe my favorite. Well, I don't know. I, I like a lot of songs on here, but this, this song is so fantastic. There's like this, 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 this verse where I don't really want to quote the lyrics because if you don't say them in a, a London accent, they sound super lame and I'm way too lame in general just to even attempt it. But he's, he, it just sounds so like, I don't know, that he's just like, <laughs> let's look at the lyrics quick. I'll point it out. Because there's kind of like a, a general flow to the song. The chorus is like very lyrically dense and stuff. And there's this uh, really kind of clubby type sample playing. It's really pitched up and stuff. And then this is kind of like, it's kind of like conversational rap, you know, this, this sort of flow I find. Um, but then, and then I, where, where is it? What, what does he say? Maybe it's in the second verse. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's halfway through this line. I think this is what makes it so impactful for me. Halfway through this line, when he says, Waste Man Ting, he just explodes. And it's like some of the most like compellingly energetic rap I've heard this side of like classic Buster Rhymes. Oh, oh, so good. Okay, that's a cool addition. This I don't know too much about, D DVSN, Division. Uh, I'm only vaguely aware of them. Yeah, they're on OVO, which is like Drex, Drake's, Drek? <laughs> Drake? <laughs> uh, Drake's label. I've never listened to either of these. I guess I should check it out. But I, I would expect to see a lot of tracks like this where it's like... I don't think their music is super acclaimed in general. <laughs> no offense. Um, but, like, you know, a lot of people have one really, really good song in them. Not, not to claim that they're like a one-hit wonder. I, I, I'm not trying to be rude here, but you, you know what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah. This sounds really good, though. They're evoking ultralight beam. By the time the choir hits about halfway into this epic slow jam. So, okay, all right. I guess we'll we'll put, make a list of songs, too. Songs are a lot easier to even get into, right? So, like, this list is going to be more conquerable. Okay. I've heard this before, I'm pretty sure, mostly because of the Charlie feature. Charlie typically will feature on like pretty solid pop tracks, even ones by artists like Iggy Azalea, who my brief infatuation with was brief indeed. I think that song Fancy is a banger, largely because Charlie. So yeah, any song that she's on, it's like <clears throat> worth checking out. Robin's Dancing on My Own. This is going to be super high up on the list. All right, that's a top tenor. 212 by Azealia Banks. I also expect to see very, very high. I just thought of that. John Mouse. Sure. This is like the first non... I don't want to say pop necessarily. Like this is kind of... This sort of stuff is pushing the limits of pop. But like n uh, genres for like people that aren't nerds about music. This is the first nerd about music song. Sure, sure. Ooh, Cloud Nothings. Whoa. So this is one that, again, in retrospect, it kind of feels like they snubbed them off the albums list, because I think Pitchfork in general are quite a fan of, of Cloud Nothings. I like them all right. I have a friend who's more into them than I am, so I always kind of felt like I should get into it more. Like this one, I remember being... A lot of people were freaking out about, and I, I don't know. Maybe I should give it another try. They're nice and aggressive. I like that. And kind of noisy at times. So the, the ingredients are there. Oh, snap! Wow! Wonton Soup! Okay. I If this is the only Lil B song, I think it's way too low. Lil B has had more impact on modern rap than almost anyone else. He, he like, birthed the idea of, like, internet rap, of meme rap, of rapping about such irreverent things, about really twisting, like, gender identities in hip-hop, of, of having these weird self-mythos that don't really align consistently from song to song. Just the freedom he exhibited in creating his music, I, I think, has been such an inspiration for so many other rappers. Either people directly citing him, 
or projects that I don't think just would make any sense without Little B before him. I can praise Little B endlessly. I, I know he's in this sort of weird semi-canceled state right now. Um, I haven't even really looked into that too much, but I, I don't think anyone can deny the, the genius and the creativity and originality of his musical output. So if this is the only Little B song, it's way too low, and I'm so sad. But if this is just, you know, the Lil B like pop hit banger, you know, wonton soup, you know, it's 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 a turn up type song. And then later they're gonna have like I, I don't know. I don't know what the best example would be. No black person is ugly. I know Pitchfork has praised before, uh, for good reason. Or uh I don't know. One of the Clams Casino produced ones. Uh the the one on I'm I'm gay. He has a mixtape called I'm Gay. That's just the kind of person he is. Uh, that samples the theme of Spirited Away and Obama talking and stuff. Or, um, why can't I think of what it's called? Is it just called I'm God? Yeah. Yeah, of course. For some reason, I was like, wait a minute, is this actually what it's called? This, this song is just... I don't know. This song really, it opened a lot of doors for me. This is the song that really, like, clicked. Oh, it was released in 2009, so I guess we're not getting that one. I'd like to see Fuck KD. That's a classic. I think in terms of just his, like, bangers, not the emotional bangers, but just the sheer bangers, Fuck KD is one of the strongest. Same with I Own Swag. Birth of Rap, also godly, but I think that's also on this 2009 mixtape. Anyways, um... Okay, so I guess I'm pretty I'm pretty fine with this. I look like JK Rowling. Oh my god. He's mmm. Yes. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I hope there's more. More little B. I don't know what this is. This sounds cool. Assistant guitar streams, urgent vocals, and little else. The best of repetitions. Do you like pain? Oh, all right. We're putting this on the list. This sounds cool. I have never heard of this artist before. The cover is somehow kind of haunting, too. Tim Paula, yeah, I remember this song. It seems fine. It just seems so, I don't know, bland? Like, again, I just, I'm comparing it to, like, Animal Collective, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> Rico Nasty, sure. I don't know too much about Rico Nasty. But she seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> this album art is really fun. <laughs> I guess I'll go out of my way to listen to this one specifically. Maybe as a good entry point. This is the, really the strength of a song list, I think, is that checking out any of these is like a five-minute commitment, probably, on average. Whereas, you know, you hear about an album you want to listen to, like you gotta devote a major chunk of your, your afternoon or whatever. Uh, Ty, Ty Dolla Sign, I, I think, is one of the most underrated artists uh, around today, just in general. Like, his name, people look at it, and they're like, oh, I understand, but you don't. His voice is so haunting. It's so perfect for what it is. Just that mixture of gravelliness and etherealness. And I think he lends himself out really well to projects. Like, uh, he doesn't spam guest features all over the place and kind of, like, run the, the quote-unquote gimmick of his voice dry. But he, he really brings himself to each track. I haven't listened to too many of his solo projects. I'm not sure why, because I really do enjoy him every time he's featured on a track. So, I, you know, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll make a note of it. Um, I, I hope they have some songs from Tayana Taylor's Keep the Same Energy. I just thought of it because Ty Dolla Song was on that album. Pitchfork, I think, snubbed that album pretty hard. Just because they were in the Kanye snubbing mode. But it's so good. Oh, what the, what is this? Featuring Beyonce, wow. Talk about a feature. Okay. Okay, alright. Global cross-culture sensation. Well, unfortunately it missed me. But we'll put it on the list. Sounds like fun. Audaciously tackles Spanish and ups the diva ante. Ante. That sounds great. Beyonce's singing in Spanish. That sounds like it could be pretty crazy. Future, hell yeah. This is a good song. Again, it's like, I'm going to be a little disappointed if this is the only Future song. I think there's definitely a lot stronger songs by him. Um, I, but again, I don't know. It's like, you got to think about like what kind of significance Pitchfork is trying to convey. 
about Future's career. This was something kind of like late in his career though, compared to like the things that made him famous. So it's not like they're really going that route. I'm kind of surprised to see this here. I would put Thought It Was a Drought maybe. That might be my favorite Future song. I don't know. Cool! Hey! Very, very, oh, very cool. Okay, very happy to see this. Um, this is an album that Pitchfork was pretty positive about, but then it seemed like they forgot really quickly. I hope it ranks fairly highly in the 2019 list. Um, but this is a great selection from it. I think this song is so, 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 so good. Um, <clears throat> right before it is an extremely strong song called The Twist uh, that is just like really engrossing and has all these different like movements to it and it's like seven minutes long I think um, and then as soon as that ends it starts with this dun 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 it's the slow down oh my god the slow down and and it, it feels like I don't know the slow down is just so powerful that they're hitting these chords and then they just slow down. Oh my god, just think about that. <clears throat> Who does that? This is slowing it down. <laughs> um, the lyrics feel like this just transcendental evolution of all the other sad radio tracks we've saw, heard over the years. Every time Tom York has sang about giving up, feeling defeated, um, it, feelings of alienation, feelings of disconnect, this just feels like some even further transcendence where, like... Uh, the, the songs about death had at least some sort of sense of closure and finality and escape. But this one is the idea of the dawn course, the bloody racket of birds at sunrise waking you up again and again and again. And, and some of the lyrics are like, if you could do it all again, big deal, so what? And it's this kind of feeling of futility that it's like, I've sung about the end so many times, but here I am still going, right? Even after my long-term partner has died. Oh, boy, Ooh, it's, it's a heavy one. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> the, the Calling it the bloody racket of the dawn chorus. The, there's a song by Boards of Canada that I absolutely adore that's also called Dawn Chorus. And these two songs approach the same concept about as completely opposed as possible. It's it's amazing. Okay, cool. Skepta shut down. I think I remember this one. I like Skepta a lot. He's he's so cool. Just the way he raps is just so it's so cool. And then he collaborates with like everybody. And every time you're like, okay, how is this even gonna work? Because Skepta is so defined by this like grimy British Grimy, I'm, I'm not trying to say it as an insult. Grime is the, the is the label that people use for a certain type of British hip hop <laughs> that Skepta is a, a very iconic example of. So he, he has this like real grimy, <laughs> it still sounds like I'm insulting him, this real solid grime status that feels so incompatible with other rappers. But then he's just so cool <laughs> that like you hear him on any track and you're just like, oh, Hell yeah! I don't know. I don't know. It's really cool. I don't know what this this write up is talking about. Oh yeah, when when Kanye went up on the Brit Awards and he brought like all of these grime rappers, like Skepta was there and and Stormzy was there and probably some other grime rappers we'll see on this list. I don't know if Dave was there. I love Dave though, um, and Ag Tracy and, and all these other grime heroes. Um, yeah, Kanye just brought them all up on stage and they did uh, every day. Right? No. All day. All day. How long you spend at the mall? All day. Oh. Yeah, see? Grime wave. They're not talking about Grimes, the musician. Number one on Gorilla vs. Bear Top albums. They're not talking about gross things. They're talking about Grime. Yes. Sharon Von Etten, I believe we've seen a few times on album lists. Right? Yeah. Uh, so I guess this is a track that's kind of like a standout. So I, I don't know. I think that's like a good way to go about it. I can listen to this first and see how I'm feeling and know that this is a good representation. That album cover is fantastic. Oh my gosh. A lockstep keyboard rock anthem that's artfully mussed with synth wobbles and then... Hmm. See, I don't know. I don't know if I'm even going to like it that much, but I'll know that it's like 
a good representation of what this. Oh, oh, fantastic song. Oh my gosh. I see both sides like Chanel because the Chanel logo is like two C's like this. See both sides like Chanel. I think this is one of the most beautiful conveyances of like bisexuality in, in any artistic medium, in any, in any genre, in any time. My guy pretty like a girl and he got fight stories to tell. I see on both sides like Chanel. See on both sides like Chanel. Oh, oh. And it's it's so it's so like romantic and wistful, like talking about Tokyo and and I I rubber band a bunch of thousand dollar Delta gift cards. That image, oh my gosh, I'm not rubber banding money anymore. You think there's a bill with a dom nomination of a thousand that anyone has access to? No. I've got a bunch of thousand dollar delta gift cards oh, think about that having thousands of dollars that you can spend on only airplane travel what kind of lifestyle would you have it's beautiful it's really beautiful but i still like provider better this is my second favorite of the 2017 frank ocean tracks but i like provider better and i'm hoping that provider will still be on this list i think biking is so good too they're all so good. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah! Dude, this song is so cool. I almost forgot about it. This this song is amazing. I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's the music video is great. <sighs> I guess we shouldn't watch it. We'll get a copyright strike. There's a few scenes in the music video that I don't know. Just her attitude shines so clearly through all these little aesthetic choices that she makes. October 2019! I will be back. This sounds almost threatening. <laughs> I will be back. Yeah, this is a cool one to have on here. Yeah, yeah. I think this is cool too, that she raps about being a lesbian. That's that's not too common. Beyonce, XO, sure, sure. What's my favorite song in this album? What's that one? Take all of me. I just want to be the girl you like, the kind of girl you like. What? Oh, what's that song called? I don't know, but that's my favorite on here. I think. Bad and Bougie. Actually surprised at how low this is, given what a phenomenon it was. And like, yeah, it's super memeable, for sure. Raindrop, drop top, the Every single joke that could possibly be made has been made about this. Um, and, uh, the little Uzi vert, again, it's like, you kind of think about it by the memes, you define it by the memes and all the, the remixes of it that brought out just the mimetic qualities of bad and bougie, but it's just offset saying whoop, 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 bad and bougie, but it's just little Uzi vert saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but isn't it actually just an amazing song? Like, can we all just take a step back and acknowledge that? That there's a reason why people fiendishly memed it so hard. Further to this end, I, I'm sure Sicko Mode will show up on this list at some point. Uh, Sons of Komet. I, I know something about these. Where, where did I hear about these guys? British jazz group. Hmm. Or maybe I haven't. I don't know. This seems familiar. Your queen is a reptile. My queen is Harriet Tubman. Well, we know who wins that argument. We'll check this out. Yeah, I heard about that people are making their own Harriet Tubman 20s because they just aren't making them. Just so disappointing. When I first heard about it, I thought I heard about it because it was like a done deal that the Tubman 20s were coming. But no, I, what? So whatever. Harriet Tubman on the bill. I think I need two pills worth of them. What's that from? That's on the Kevin Gates Cut It remix, which is an amazing song, but it'll be the top the top 10 of the Pitchfork list for sure. Rich Kids. I don't know if I've listened to this. This sounds awesome because it has Waka Flocka Flame on it. So we're putting it on the list. Um, I love Waka Flocka Flame. Ooh, produced by London on the Track. But back when London on the Track was ripping off Lex Luthor? Luger? What? Okay, cool. Sure. Wait a minute. Oh, Lex Luger drove him off the map. Okay, I was like, one of the track has been driven off the map. That's not true at all. Oh, 
Robert's career is currently mired in reality TV purgatory. What? What is this? What 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 am I looking at? Growing up hip hop Atlanta. Well, I wouldn't call this reality TV necessarily. Doesn't this seem like it's more like a documentary or something? Reality TV, I thought he was gonna be on like Celebrity Apprentice or something. That's gonna be very sad, but oh I don't know. Okay. 1975, sure. I feel like we're not going to see the last of them yet. Definitely love it if we made it is gonna be quite high on this list. Which I understand. It's, it's a pretty cool song. Cool is like the opening track. I think I already talked about this in the album list, but there's a moment in this opening track where, where Q-Tip kind of like extends a little further. He kind of extends and bends in this way that only he can do. Deeply satisfying to hear the group strike as strongly as af ever after 18 years of downtime. Indeed. Exactly. Not that I was listening to A Tribe Called Quest in the early 90s. I was a baby in the early 90s. But <clears throat> when I, when you know, I have a long history with them regardless, getting into them as a teenager. Yeah. Oh, really nice. Okay. Oh, ooh, I love this song. I love Sampha. I love this album so much. I, I think this song is, like, definitely one of the most beautiful things he's ever composed. And, and really one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard, period. Hearing him play it live, like, it's very, very difficult not to just burst into tears. Um, yeah, look, look at this story. Oh my god, his mother had died of cancer. No one knows me like the piano in my mother's home, is the completion of the lyric. Oh, oh my god, just, just, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. It's really, really nice. At the same time, it's just like a piano ballad. And I feel like Sampha's talents are so far beyond that. That's just like one little slice of what he can do. That other songs like 100 Degrees Plastic, to me, are like even stronger. So I'd like to see those on this list too, but who knows. Nicki Minaj, come on a cone. <laughs> the back-to-back -back of these two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's... Uh... It's jarring to say the least. <laughs> but yeah, it's this is a sweet song. It's totally true. Um, one of her best just performances in terms of like pure lyrical dominance and stuff. Uh, up there with her monster verse, which is of course like the the holy grail of Nicki Minaj, just completely wrapping her mind out, wrapping out of her mind. I guess also wrapping her mind out. I don't know what's up, but yeah. Uh, she still does really good verses sometimes. She did a verse on uh, a 2 Chain song that I thought was fantastic called Realize. She did a verse on uh, a Playboy Cardi song, Poke It Out, that I thought was really good. So she still tries super hard at some points, but it's not the same kind of like, I'm just going to hit you with everything. It's a more kind of like measured. Yeah. Florence and the Machine, Shake It Out. Sure. Oh, well, that sounds nice. Let's look at these comments. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is great. This is so great. Uh, I'm glad they directed me to go look at these. Maybe you feel at least a little hopeful. I really like... I don't know. I've never been super into Florence and the Machine, but I do like I Got the Love. Which I don't, I think came out in like, before 2010. Yeah, 2009. And then, there's this one, and then there's You Got the Love. Dizzy Rascal version! And this, this one, like, <laughs> I don't know, it feels so basic, it feels so like... <laughs> yeah, there's no other word but basic, but god damn, this is such a powerful performance! Oh my god, they just go so hard! I love it. It's it's truly a legendary performance. Check it out. Anyways, uh, I don't really remember this particular song all that well though, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out too. DJ Khaled, I'm on one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. DJ Khaled doesn't really do anything. He just does the ad libs and he makes everybody show up. That's fine. Ooh, some sleep, the marijuana theme, 
Sure. Uh, I, I kind of like this album. I sort of got into it. I, I kind of like stoner metal occasionally. Um, I like uh, Electric Wizard a lot. They have this song, uh, Witch Cult Tonight or something. That doesn't sound right. Electric Wizard, Witch Cult Today. Witch Cult Today. This song, I think, is fantastic. And it's almost like this completely satiates me for stoner metal, so I only just listen to this. Um, but yeah, Sleep is another like legendary doom stoner metal thing. We could have had it all rolling in the deep. I think this song is like 500 times better than Hello, which never appealed to me. Um, but I think... Uh, I set fire to the rain. What's that song called? Set fire to the rain? I think that one's even better. Oh well. Lil Peep? Cool. Yeah. I think Lil Peep was on the uh, albums list too, right? Which is awesome. I mean, not that Lil Peep knows about it. But, yeah, that's cool. St. Vincent, sure. This is on Mass Education. So again, it's kind of cool that they can give shout outs to like other albums that didn't make the uh, album list. 38% like this album, really? What? Who's going out of their way to Google Mass Education and be like, yeah, this one, I hate it. Like what? <laughs> King Cruel, Dumb Surfer. This is on from The Ooze, I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, oh, interesting. This sounds good. I don't know too much about Tina Shea. I don't even know how to pronounce it. And this doesn't help me, because I can never remember what these symbols mean. I wish I could memorize it, but I, I have no idea what these symbols mean. <laughs> um, yeah, I should listen to her more. Uh, all the things I've heard from her were, like, fun and catchy, so we'll put this on the list. And I like Schoolboy Q a lot. I hope like uh, Collard Greens or something makes this list later. Or, uh, oh, Eddie Kane. Yeah. What's that song? Blank Face, Eddie Kane. Oh, that song's so good. We'll put this on the list because I really hadn't heard of Bad Bunny very much at all when I saw the album list uh, entry. So this is a good entry point. Defining moment for Bad Bunny. So there we go. Jessica Pratt, I think we saw on the album list. Yes. Looks like it was pretty near the top, too. So again, I think this will make a good entry point. Strums of a nylon string guitar cycles through the song, bobbing refrains and wordless choruses, their voice sewn through with an intensity that belies its understated presentation. Yeah? Andre's New For You. Now you see when the album cover they have is just like a white label thing. <clears throat> that it wasn't given cover art, it was just put into a little sleeve and sold, therefore almost exclusively to DJs. That's, that's saying something to me. That's saying like, I don't know, there's like an authenticity. Ooh, Slum Village? I know Slum Village. I like Slum Village. Okay, cool. Um... The DJ for Slum Village. Okay, cool. All right. We we'll definitely check this out. The Vito Fall. Nigerian Afro pop singer Navito. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, cool. I really like this album cover too. It feels so almost vapor wavy. It's like the vapor wave they would make for the generation that we're in right now. <laughs> you know? Future Vaporwave. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, definitely the most maximalist song on the album in general. A lot of fun. What about mixtapes, though? Is Lil Yachty going to make any of these lists? Is Lil Yachty ever going to be acknowledged by Pitchfork again? Maybe not. But, I mean, this is a pretty solid choice. It's it's so catchy. It's so fun. 2 Chains like, wraps his heart out. You know the two chains. Every single time he's on a track with uh, Lil Wayne, he's just like, "Yes, yes, we made it!" And then he tries super hard, and it's amazing. Uh, and Lil Wayne does a great verse too. 
The music video is great. Yeah, a lot to like about this one. And it's kind of cool, again, they put acid rap on the list for albums, but then they, they bring out a sample or a single from Coloring Book. So it's a nice diversification. Ooh, Pop Can. I like Pop Can. I don't know who Gaza Slim is or Unpronounceable. Um, Pop Can alone, I'll put this on the list. Yeah, yeah, all right. Odd Future Oldie, so <laughs> Russian nesting doll. Ah, yes, that's true. I kind of forgot about that. This was quite historic. So Oldie has like every Odd Future member, including all the ones you've never heard of, rapping over like an eight-minute song. It's even got Frank Ocean on there, which is crazy because Frank Ocean, even when he was like most Odd Futurist and was like actually collaborating with them, he wouldn't show up on something like this, you know? Like, he wouldn't show up in a way that put him with all the other Odd Future people. It would just be like a track here and there with the internet or with Tyler or whatever. Anyways, uh, yeah, so this was the first time, even Frank, yeah, they, they know what's up, that Earl had appeared in any sort of musical capacity since his mom made him go to a boarding school in Samoa uh, thinking that his musical career was turning him into I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's been through some real major ups and downs since then. Um, not necessarily because of his musical career, but perhaps exacerbated by it by many ways. So this whole free Earl thing, given years and years now to look back in retrospect, I don't know. The point is, though, yes, Earl is a generational talent. Absolutely true. <laughs> Yeah, I'm guilty of that. I, I listen to the Frank verse too and the Tyler verse. It's it's yeah, it, it definitely deserves its spot here. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. I got a little confused for a second because I like Katie B, and I like the uh, album that's called On a Mission, and there's a song on it I really particularly like called Witch's Brew. And the reason I like that is for an extremely ridiculous reason which is they made a really cool ITG chart for it. Uh, which I thought would be easy to find. Here we go. Goodness, it's so hard. Look, look, that's all you need to see. 200, it's 256 beats per minute, and then we're doing 16th notes. So every beat is four steps. So that's like over... Uh, a thousand beats per minute, which means it's a thousand times 60 steps per second, or steps per minute and steps per second. Anyways, we don't need to get into all of that, but I, I really like that song. So at first, I for a second, I was like, oh, is that the one I really like? But no, um, I guess I should check this one out too. Because to me, the rest of the album was like solid enough, but I was really just obsessed with Witch's Brew. But this one is worth uh, checking out again. I'm glad to see her on here, Katie B. One of the more underrated, like, poppy pop pop people. <laughs> I think she had some really cool ideas for songs. A, a different kind of aggressiveness in her beats and stuff. Hard in the Paint. Fantastic. An all-time classic. Where do you even start with talking about this song? Of course it's Hard in the MS Paint. <laughs> Because uh, it's paint. It's I go hard in the paint. <laughs> it's like quite a few people have done this. This is the one that I know about. It's so stupid. They play it on YouTube. This like super sketchy upload. And then it's just moving the mouth. <laughs> uh, ridiculous. Okay, anyways. Yeah, I love this song. <clears throat> Not even my favorite song on Flock of Ellie, though. I think I like uh, Karma best. I think Karma is just absolutely nuts. Yeah, when my little brother... Okay, so it, you should listen to the clean version of this. Th this song has one of the most hilarious clean versions I've ever seen. But my, my favorite is absolutely... When my little brother died, I said, School. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm the head of the motherfucking state? That's a good one, too. This, I think, is normally this sort of, like, parody thing. 
doesn't appeal to me much. But this is just so well done. The guy actually sounds like Obama. <laughs> Baraka Flaga Flame. Oh, lots of really, really good memories associated with this. Beyonce, one plus one. There's going to be a lot of Beyonce on this list, isn't there? Countdown is definitely still to come. Uh, Drunken Love is definitely still to come. I hope. I really like Drunken Love. Um, maybe some from Lemonade. I don't know. Probably not that. Partition. That's what it's called. Partition. The I Just Want to Be the Kind of Girl You Like song, which I really, really like, but it's probably not on this list. Yeah. Uh, this is a good one, though, too. Girl unit. What is girl unit? What indeed? What to me makes me think of the Leaf song, What? Which is what I get to. Ooh, Jesus is coming. Um, we'll put this on the list. Well timed use of air horn. Yeah, that alone. I'm sold. I am so sold. Kanye's Blood on the Leaves. Awesome. I sincerely hope this is not the end of our Kanye experience with this list. I really doubt it will be, but yeah, holy. An amazing, 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 amazing song. Holy crap. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god. The horns? The horns? <laughs> Japanese breakfast. We talked about in the album list, I think. Or did we talk about Japan droids? See, I keep mixing them up. I don't know. This sounds nice. The title is kind of fun. Everybody wants to love you. What a nice idea. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Now this is the finale song. Because there's one song called Triple X. And then there's one song called 30. And I'm pretty sure 30 is... Yeah. 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 Oh my god. These lyrics. This is one of the most emotional conveyances I have ever heard in hip-hop music. Or just music, period. The, the he, he really is breaking down by the end of the track. Uh... <laughs> And then the opening lines are so funny and irreverent. It's like he starts in his normal mode, and then throughout the song is just this incredibly smooth, engrossing transition into just completely spilling his guts. And the the sample of 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 uh, Kalinsky's "Nights Out," whoo! Oh my God, that horn! We were just talking about these horns. I don't even know what horn I like better. Jeez, these are strong, strong songs. Where are they even going to go from here? Miley Cyrus, Wrecking Ball. I can't do that. Okay, so last night, I, would, I don't know if it's going to be on YouTube. So I play In the Groove. I was just showing you In the Groove for uh, Witch's Brew. That song is too hard for me. Don't don't get me wrong. But uh, the, there's a pack called Sexuality Violation. That's all just pop songs, but they make really difficult charts out of them. And there's uh, a Wrecking Ball one that is passable for me. It's <laughs> it's not this one. This is the higher difficulty. I did the medium difficulty. Anyways, it was like a really good pass for me because I'm, I've taken a long break from ITG and I'm just kind of getting back into it. So it was a very triumphant pass. It's caused me to really love this song. Just the experience of being pumped full of adrenaline and really focusing on it as I play. It's a good song. The music video is great, too. Oh, yeah. Her burnt cigarette voice. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. <sighs> of course, hits like, you know what? It's impossible not to sing along at the top of your lungs. Even while I'm playing the song, I'm trying to sing along. <laughs> and, and I'm stepping at a rate of not as fast as the other song we looked at, but it's something like 180 beats per minute. So, I don't know. There's some math in that. Gang Gang Dance. I, I never was super into Gang Gang Dance. 11 and a half minute. Ooh. All right. Well, we'll put it on the list because I don't distinctly recall listening to this song. Are they around anymore? Gang Gang Dance? I feel like I haven't heard about them in a long time. Twenty eighteen. But then a long break before twenty eighteen. I remember this one. This is the one I first heard about. Ooh, I wonder when Tiny Mixtapes is gonna put out their list. I like Tiny Mixtapes a lot. AV Club probably gonna put out a list. Oh yeah, we got plenty of lists to read. 
And uh, I think I'll stop here and do another 50 in the next video and so on and so forth. So yeah, lots and lots of list content to come. I, I hope you're entertained by this. I'm, I feel, I don't know, I, I really like making these videos. It's just, I'm, I'm hit with like nostalgia and like emotions all over the spectrum and all through the, the chronological, the, chron, the, the era of the last decade. And it's like every time I scroll down, I don't know how I'm going to get hit next. So it's, it's really engrossing and fun for me. I hope that I'm conveying the fun of this to you. And if not, whatever. You can watch other videos. Bye-bye. <laughs>